just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Audible. Many of you probably already have Audible and you listen to audiobooks like I do, but if you don't, you should. More on Audible later, including a book recommendation from me. For now, you could start your free trial and get your first audiobook plus two Audible originals totally for free by going to audible.com forward slash brain food or for our American friends, text brain food one word to 500 500 apparently that works some sort of magic anyway let's get into it the queen is likely one of the single best protected people on the entire planet but on june the 13th 1981 a 17 year old young man who held a marksman's badge from the air training corps somehow managed to circumvent the endless layers of security put in place to protect the queen and fired a revolver at her from about 10 feet or three meters away in the process he managed to get off not just one shot but half a dozen completely emptying his gun so well how is the queen still alive well thanks to strict gun laws in the uk the young man one marcus Sargent, could only get his hands on a gun that shot blanks so well why did he do it well according to Sargent, he was inspired to try and kill the queen thanks to the deaths of john lennon jfk and the attempts on the life of ronald reagan and pope john paul ii in particular Sargent was intrigued by the subsequent notoriety and fame that mark david chapman achieved after shooting lennon and he endeavored to do something similarly shocking so that he'd be remembered as well not unique in this humans have been doing this sort of thing since seemingly humans have been humaning with perhaps the most notable ancient example being about 2000 years ago when Herostratus destroyed one of the seven wonders of the ancient world just so history would remember him all right so going back to Sargent well prior to trying to shoot the Queen he had received military training reportedly joining and then quickly quitting both the Royal Marines and the army after about three months and two days respectively in the former case he claims he couldn't take the bullying from his superiors it's not clear why he left the army after this sergeant tried to become both a police officer and a firefighter before working briefly at a zoo a job he quit after just a few months reportedly because as with seemingly all teens he didn't like being told what to do after deciding that shooting the queen was his ticket into the history books sergeant wrote in his journal i'm going to stun and mystify the world with nothing more than a gun i will become the most famous teenager in the world decision made sergeant set about trying to get a hold of a gun with which to accomplish the task fortunately for the queen he was unable to do this thanks to strict uk gun laws related to gun ownership and the sale of live ammunition thus he was unable to both acquire bullets for his father's revolver and unable to acquire one of his own even after successfully joining a gun club eventually he did manage to purchase a colt python replica which was modified to fire only blanks despite the unmistakable handicap of not having a working gun sergeant charged ahead with his plan to assassinate the queen anyway posing for pictures with his newly acquired firearm as well as his father's that he had no bullets for he then sent these to a couple of magazines along with a letter about what he was going to do he also reportedly sent a letter to the queen stating your majesty don't go to the trooping of the color today because there is an assassin waiting outside to kill you this is a letter we should know didn't arrive until three days after sergeant tried to shoot the queen as for the day of the trooping of the color ceremony sergeant waited patiently for the queen who he knew would be vulnerable due to the fact that she would be riding a horse in the open and not in her usual well-guarded carriage as soon as sergeant spotted her majesty he rushed forward and fired all six blanks that his gun held at her something that understandably startled the queen's 19 year old horse burmese the queen showing why she is often considered an ambassador for british stoicism didn't really react much other than calming her horse and then continuing on all smiles as if nothing had happened if you watch the live news reporting of the event the bbc broadcaster likewise exhibits this same stereotypical british reaction directly after the shots were fired calmly saying hello some little disturbance in the approach road burmese receiving a reassuring pat from her majesty queen that he's a very experienced wise old fellow and then much as the queen had done continuing on as if nothing significant had just happened of course just seconds after the shots were fired the queen's personal guard tackled sergeant and began treating him as you might expect her guard would do a man who had just seemingly tried to kill their charge sergeant reportedly later told the guards his reasoning for the assassination attempt i wanted to be famous i wanted to be a somebody 
Sargent was ultimately taken to jail, where he had to be held in solitary confinement for his own protection, as apparently even British prisoners don't take kindly to someone taking pot shots at the Queen. When it came to the trial, because Sargent's gun only held blanks, he couldn't be technically tried for an attempted assassination. As a result, Sargent was instead tried under Section 2 of the Treason Act of 1842 for willfully discharging at the person of Her Majesty the Queen a cartridge pistol with intent to alarm her. Funny enough, this act actually came about in the first place because of people taking pot shots at Queen Victoria, most notably when one John Francis on May 29, 1842, chose to point a gun at the Queen, but not fire. The next day he did the same thing, but this time discharging his weapon, but without an apparent attempt to actually hit her, at which point he was arrested and tried for treason. A mere two days later, another individual, John William Bean, did the same thing, except again there was no risk to the Queen. In this case, Bean had loaded the weapon with paper and tobacco. The problem here was that while neither of these instances were individuals actually trying to kill the Queen, they nonetheless were being charged with treason, a conviction which meant death. This was something Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria, thought was too harsh, which ultimately led to the passage of the Treason Act of 1842. This had lesser penalties for discharging a firearm near the monarch with the intent to startle said monarch rather than kill. As for the sentence, if convicted, this included a flogging and a maximum prison sentence of seven years. Okay, so going back to Sergeant, said the Lord Chief Justice Geoffrey Lane to Sergeant during the trial. I have little doubt that if you had been able to obtain a live gun or live ammunition for your father's gun, you would have tried to murder Her Majesty. You tried to get a license. You tried to get a gun. You were not able to obtain either. Therefore, for reasons which are not easy to understand, you chose to indulge in what was a fantasy assassination. You must be punished for the wicked thing you did. Or to put it another way, Sargent won't be remembered by history as the guy who tried to kill the Queen, but rather the guy who tried and utterly failed to mildly startle her. In the end, while well, Sargent did apologize for what he'd done in court and would later write a letter to the Queen apologizing directly, he was nonetheless sentenced to five years in prison, though at least he got out of the flogging part that was possible punishment. Sargent ultimately had to only serve three years, the majority of which was spent at Grindon Psychiatric Prison in Buckinghamshire. After he got out of prison in October of 1984, he changed his name and very deliberately disappeared from the public eye, his desire for fame evidently having been quashed during his time being held at Her Majesty's leisure. And look, if you're being held at Her Majesty's leisure, which is probably the most British thing ever, you've got lots of time to read books. But hey, if you're not, because, well, I don't think you can watch YouTube in the Nick, which is the British term for jail, by the way, then Audible is for you. Audible is a leading provider of audiobooks with a vast selection. They really have books on almost any subject, from fitness to Fitzgerald. Now, you just watched a video about a failed assassination, so I would love to recommend the book to you assassination vacation which takes a look at some of the most famous assassinations in history but in a really funny way indeed this book has thousands of great reviews and also features narration from people you have definitely heard of like conan o'brien john stewart and a lot of other names that you would know but hey there's loads of stuff on there whatever you want whether it's a biography some sort of other non-fiction or just a best-selling novel all right but now you've got to be wondering well why do i go with audible specifically well that's because it's just the best way to do it membership gives you one free book a month no matter the length there's a huge range of titles they've got amazing apps with speed listens so you can whip through the books really quickly and you also own the books which means even if you cancel your membership you can come back and listen later there's also the two free audible originals that i mentioned and that's from a constantly changing selection uh, audible originals are exclusive audio titles that are created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as theater to journalism literature and a whole lot more. And hey, on the off chance you pick a book and you just don't like it, no problemo, you can swap it for another one. So start a free trial with Audible and get your first audiobook plus two Audible originals totally for free by going to audible.com forward slash brain food. Or if you're in the US, you can text brain food one word to 500 500. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Don't forget to subscribe, check out Audible, and I'll see you next time.